Our 550 short line railroads operate 50,000 miles of track and handle in origination or termination one out of every four carloads moving on the National Railroad Network. We are, as we like to say, the first mile and last mile of that network. I remember when the birth of the short line industry that we see today really started to take hold in the 1980s. You know, I was relatively new with the railroad industry at that time, and I was really scratching my head trying to figure out whether or not these guys could do it better than we could. And history has proven that that was exactly the right thing to do, and the ability to go in and to deal with customers on a one-on-one -on -one basis and build that relationship and give them the extra service and level of attention that a class one wasn't able to made all the difference in the world. There's really a couple of transformational uh, items that we've seen in modern railroad history since the 70s and the 80s. Certainly the Staggers Act, true concepts reform, and quite frankly the rationalization of the Class 1 railroad network and that the short lines have played truly a profound part in that because it's allowed the, the Class 1s to really do things, focus on things that, that, that's really in their sweet spot, heavy dense main lines, and has created a whole industry of some 550 short line railroads to be able to do what they do really well that first and last mile. They're local companies and they have lots of local contacts with business leaders, with political leaders, and they're able to generate rail business in a way that quite frankly the large class ones aren't because we're not out there every day in every community. There's tremendous value of the short line industry, specifically the rural America. We see it all over our network. Uh, my favorite example is the state of Kansas that quite frankly as the former Santa Fe was getting rid of some of its miles, short-lined it, and then through a, a couple of different short-line railroads, and now Watco does a, a great job with those set of assets, works with the state of Kansas to bring in agricultural commodities to connect to now what we know as the BNSF Railway. You handle one out of every four carloads moving on the National Rail Network. Short lines help preserve rail infrastructure that otherwise face the possibility of abandonment. We have enough bike paths, quite frankly, in this country that used to be old railroad right-of-ways, and that's what would have happened to the entire 55,000 miles of now short-line railroads if we wouldn't have had that short-line industry to step up and fill that void. As the feeder lines of the Class 1 system, we provide between 19 and 25 percent of their gross revenues. That partnership is critically important to the short-line industry, but it is equally important to the Class 1 railroads. It's absolutely critical to make sure that the short lines remain strong because if they're not out there, that's an enormous amount of freight that's going to be out in rural environments in trucks, in small towns in trucks, and that's just not a good thing for anybody. Every ton of freight that we can take off the nation's highway is a good ton of freight for our society, and certainly short-line railroads, just like Class 1 railroads, are the cleanest, most environmentally friendly way to move a ton of freight. When we talk about our statistic that we can move one ton of freight 450 miles, that's including our short line carriers and our partners on both ends. And so that's just part of the magic of steel wheel on rail. The beauty of the North American Railroad Network is the seamless nature of the system. What allows our 550 individual short lines to make that seamless system work is the enduring partnership we have with our Class 1 connections.